I got this massive stack of books that I've got in on trade over the past week and stay tuned to the end because I'm saving the most interesting one for last. Bryce Comics. Guys, it's time for another live sale this Friday over on my Instagram page, Friday, September 10th at 3 p.m. Pacific time, 6 p.m. Eastern time. We usually run till about 8-ish Pacific time, 11 p.m. Uh, Eastern time. There's going to be deep discounts on slabs. I got a whole bunch of new slabs coming in. Josh is going to be there with his keys. Cam is going to be manning the chat. It's going to be an awesome time. There's going to be some great deals. There's going to be giveaways throughout the night. Just come hang out. If not anything else, come, come stop by and say, hi if you don't have instagram this is a great chance for you to download it go follow me hit me up and i will show you the ropes yeah i really hope to see you guys there and uh, enjoy the show congratulations to jay hamrick you are the winner of august giveaway for the newsletter at bryascomics.com and you won the invincible number one local comic shop day gold foil edition and the september prize is spider gwen number zero in a cgc 9.8 white pages uh, which reprints edge of spider verse number two it's the exact same cover as edge of spider verse number two the first appearance of gwen stacy as new spider woman all you have to do is subscribe to the newsletter over at bryscomics.com and every single month that you stay subscribed you're entered to win a free slab also subscribe to the channel comment on this video and like this video and you're entered to win my 8k giveaway so once we hit 8,000 subscribers i'm going to give away um this copy of berserker number one third print foil the dan mora and the cgc 98 and this awesome stack of raw books infamous iron man number one invincible iron man number one the recount number one the ben temple smith um, exclusive cover this book's gonna pop any day i think and nice house on the lake number one cover b so subscribe to the channel comment on this video and like this video and you are entered to win um, so i'm going to once we hit 8k i'm going to randomly select a video between now and then and then randomly select a comment and then check that that person is subscribed and they will win this awesome set of books so about trades i'm always open to trades um, and i really prefer to do trades for pre-order items keep in mind you know when you trade like collector to collector uh, it has to be like a fair trade you know if I was trading something out of my PC for somebody else uh, book out of their PC you know it's equal value but when you trade with a dealer you have to keep in mind like say I have a book on my site that's already listed it's at a competitive price it's 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 listed for sale um, say for 500 bucks and then you have three books that you want to trade me that total a value of 500 bucks well now I have to take that book ship it get your three books make three new listings for your books sell ship three different books just to make the exact same amount of money. So it has to kind of tip a little bit in my favor to make up for all the extra work that goes along with trades. But oftentimes, you know, we can strike a deal and, and, and make it work. And they've been going really smooth lately, actually. So just keep that in mind. And um, if you want to trade, you know, one of your keys for a bunch of pre-order items, that's a great way for you to maximize your profit on your keys because my pre-order prices are really low. So by the time you get them in, you know, you can sell them for more than you would have been able to sell that one key for in a lot of instances. I mean, nobody can predict the future of prices, but I think a lot of people are getting some really good deals. So we're just going to go through here and I'll, and I'll tell you what I traded for it. So this is Captain America number six, the first appearance of the winter soldier and i traded a copy of infamous iron man number one and invincible iron man number one cgc 9 i can't quite remember exactly what i traded for this but um don't sleep on this guy's the first appearance of the winter soldier and you know it, he's not going anywhere he's still in the mcu the hype has died down but he will be back in that book um so i would suggest picking that up anytime you can find it for a good price okay so these next two books uh were a, a set um, I got Ultimate Fallout number four in a 9.8, the Pakeli variant, and Young Avengers number one in a 9.8. And I traded Something is Killing the Children number one and two um, for these two books. And uh, you guys, I actually went out and bought some more copies of this because it's, the price is just so incredibly low right now, like 400 bucks. So I was really happy with this trade. Um, both of these are holds for me right now because... Uh, you know, the prices are just are, are way low uh, for these. 
any kind of announcement for either one of these books and the price will skyrocket. And Young Avengers, I think, is such a good bet. Not only that, it is the first appearance of Kate Bishop and all these other uh, Young Avengers like Patriot, Iron Lad, Asgardian, and Hulkling. And, I mean, we already know that Kate Bishop is confirmed for the MCU. So, like, even if they don't do Young Avengers, that's a, that's a monster book. Um, so I'm glad to have that. I've actually never owned that before. And so this next one was a set. I, I got this, these two books here. This is Teen Titans number 12, double signed by Mirka and Dolfo and Stepik, I'm going to butcher this, Stepan Sedgik, uh, the cover artist for this, the first full appearance of the Batman Who Laughs. Um, and Ultra Mega number one, this is the Comics Vault exclusive. So for that set of books, I traded two infamous Iron Man and one Mighty Avengers number one. Again, I do the trade value based off my pre-order price on the book. So infamous Iron Man one is 175 bucks. So two of those is about 350 plus the um, about 200, so about 550 um, for these two books in trade value. I think it's a great deal. I mean, I'd be lucky to sell those for 550 right now. And Uncanny X-Men number 221. This came from my buddy Clyde. Uh, Clyde has pressing issues. He's got a little YouTube channel. Go check him out. Some awesome videos. Awesome dude. Um, this is just a beautiful 9.6. First appearance of Mr. Sinister. And for this, I think it was one each of Infamous Iron Man and Invincible Iron Man. Um, all right, these next three are just books that I picked up and bought at fair market value because I'm stocking up on them. And anytime I see a really good price, I'm going to buy these books. Point one, number one, the first appearance of Sam Alexander as the new Nova. And this is the cover A. I paid about 280, which uh, I, I'll, I'll pay 280 all day for these um, in a 9.8. Ultimate Fallout 4, again, 9.8, the Pakeli variant. I paid 400 bucks for this, could not pass it up for 400 bucks. Obviously, the first appearance of Miles Morales. Here we have point one, number one, the Bradshaw wraparound variant cover, which is just a gorgeous, gorgeous cover. Definitely prefer this cover over the cover A. I would, as a collector, I would go for this variant all day over the cover A. It's just an incredible, incredible wraparound cover. All right, so next up we have, um, this is actually just a collection that I bought. I paid 1200 bucks for this next little set of books here. And uh, starting off with Avengers 196, 9.0, white pages, first appearance Taskmaster. This is going to be listed for a very reasonable price over on my website. Nice Mylar bag too. Captain America number 117, first appearance and origin of the Falcon as Sam Wilson and Red Wing. This book is a 6.0 and it just needs a little bit of a clean. The back, I may cr crack this out, clean it myself. I think if I spend about 10 minutes cleaning this, I can greatly, greatly increase the presentation of this and bump that grade up. You know, this book, all the Captain America and the Winter Soldier and uh, Falcon books are, are you know, seeing a dip right now because the hype has died down. I think it's a great time to buy in. I'm getting, I'm picking up a whole bunch of uh, Cap 25s. Um, I would love this to see a grade bump in this, uh, but yeah, I think it's a great time to buy that book. Also, we have X-Men 141 and CBCS 9.6 white pages. I might crack this out and send it back to CGC because uh, it's a mo technically it's a modern book. It's from 1981. So in that modern tier as a dealer, it's about 20 bucks to slab a book. And I think for 20 bucks, if I can get this in a 9.6, um, I think I can get quite a bit more for it in a CGC 9.6. And there's no rush on X-Men books right now since X-Men is hurting so bad. And then also a CBCS 9.4 white pages of Savage She-Hulk number one. And it's just a beautiful, beautiful 9.4. I can't really see anything wrong with it. But that's the thing about cracking cases is once you do crack them, you see all kinds of stuff that you can't see through the case. Like it's, it's no matter how you look at it through the case, there's things you can't see when you have the book exposed and under a light and you go, oh yeah, I see, I see why it's a 9.4 now. I definitely think I could still get a 9.4 in a CGC, so and it's also a modern book, so that one will probably get cracked as well. And then the last book from that little collection for 1200 bucks is Amazing Spider-Man 194 in an 8.5 off-white to white pages, first appearance of the Black Hat and Felicia Hardy. So this last collection here is something I traded for a buddy, um, about $6,000 worth of books. So 
I don't know exactly what it was on my end, but this is what it was on his end. There was a, a variety of stuff that we've done over time. It's a buddy of mine. Um, and first up is Batman 139 in a CGC 4.0. Beautiful, beautiful looking 4.0. It's an early Batman 10 center. First appearance of the original Batgirl in Betty Kane. I mean, this is the first Batgirl in a 4.0. And I'm just shocked that that book is like around a $500 book. You can get a 4.0 presents beautifully of the first Batgirl for around 500 bucks. Um, then we have Marvel premiere number 15. First appearance and origin of Iron Fist. First appearance of Harold Meacham. Death of Wendell and Heather Rand, amongst other things. There's other stuff going on with this book. 7.5. And next in that collection is Fighting Five number 40. First appearance and origin of the Peacemaker in Christopher Smith. Now, who saw this book coming? This book is incredibly rare. I'll put up on the screen exactly how many copies of this there are. In a 5.0 off-white pages. And who would have thought that they would have stayed true to the original first appearance of Peacemaker, like his costume and everything. I had no idea that they would keep it true to the comics. And now we know that Peacemaker is confirmed for a television series on HBO Max. So this book is definitely going to see a bump as that that show gets closer. It's a comedy with John Cena reprising his role as Peacemaker. Uh, I can't wait. I can't wait to see it. I'm always in for a good comedy. And next we have Avengers number two in a 4.0 old label. Um, and this one is mind boggling. I have no idea why this is a 4.0. I'm going to have to buy the graders notes and see what is going on to keep this to be a 4.0 i mean i have an 8.5 that looks very similar to this like not joking um, i could easily see this getting a 6.0 just resubmitting it and getting a 6.0 um, unless there's something in the graders notes that i don't know about i'll put up on the screen if i found anything in the graders notes that would justify a 4.0 but this is avengers number two the first uh first appearance of the space phantom Second appearance of the Avengers. I mean, just so early. And, I mean, Iron Man still in his gold uh, suit. I mean, just an incredible, incredible key. Criminally undervalued. A 4.0 is, is criminally undervalued. Um, and so we'll have to see what I do with that one. All right, these next three are have something in common. They are all Black Knight related. So we have Avengers... 48 in an 8.0 off white to white pages. So this is the first appearance and origin of the third Black Knight in Dane Whitman. And it's also the first appearance of Aragorn, the winged steed. And I'm not sure if Aragorn is confirmed for the Eternals movie, but we know that Dane Whitman is confirmed for the Eternals uh, movie uh, in Kit Harrington from Game of Thrones. And this seems to be the money book for all of the Black Knight keys, um, Avengers 48. But there's also Avengers 47, which is the first appearance of Dane Whitman. And as you can see on the cover here, we have Magneto. I mean, Dane Whitman has some deep ties to all kinds of different things and teams and people in the Marvel comics. I mean, he's tied to Magneto. So he's tied to the X-Men. He's tied to um, Kang the Conqueror. He has ties to the Eternals, obviously. His love affair with Cersei. He also had a love affair with um, an inhuman, amongst other things. There's, he has so many ties. Marvel can literally do anything with that character, and I can't wait to see what they do with Dane Whitman. And so subscribe to the channel and hit that notification bell because I'm going to drop an entire video dedicated to the Black Knight and all the keys and stuff where I think there's still some great potentials. The market is sleeping on the Black Knight right now. All right, and so this is by far the most interesting book to me, and we have Black Knight number one in a CGC 2.0, cream to off-white pages. This is the first appearance of the Black Knight and the Crusader. It's the first appearance of the Ebony Blade. It's the first appearance of Mordred. It's the first appearance of Excalibur, the Sword of King Arthur. And it's also the first appearance of Morgan Le Fay. But the important thing about this book is the first appearance of the Black Knight and the Ebony. Um, the Ebony Blade is going to have a huge role in uh, the Black Knight story, in the Dane Whitman story. It has, you know, mystical powers. It's enchanted, which could tie him to everything mystical in the MCU. I mean, he's the sword itself is able to like block um, mystical enchantments, which could come into play in a major way 
later on. Um, I'm going to follow up with all of that info in a future video, but the best part about this book is this back ad, and I will throw up on the screen here um, a copy of this ad. I mean, this is from 1955. It's some golden age goodness. This ad is for the Kelpidine Candy Plan. So it's a candy diet. And there's just, I just love this about the golden age. There's so many ads like this that you could never get away with today. We're talking like tobacco ads, tons of weight loss ads, but this one, this one takes the cake, no pun intended. So it says, reduce with delicious Kelpidine candy plan. We guarantee you will lose up to five pounds in five days, 10 pounds in 10, and keep it off. How fast you lose weight depends on how quickly you order and how much you are overweight. <laughs> so <laughs> it's got the requisite picture of the scientist there looking at the candy in a beaker. You know, this is some, some really scientifically tested scientifically and clinically tested that amazing ingredient in kelpidine candy is the most remarkable discovery for fat people ever made it's been used by doctors in test after test the results were far better than doctors ever hoped for the results were reported in medical journals throughout the world doctors are invited to write for details so if you are a doctor and you want details you can write for that but they're not going to give you the details in the ad and so i looked into it to see what kelpidine was and kelpidine was a candy and also like a supplement you know drug that had all kinds of controversy uh, related to it because what it is is it's derived from kelp kelpidine is derived from kelp as in seaweed and it's just this incredibly iodine rich candy that was super dangerous because you shouldn't be eating these massive amounts of iodine, especially since iodine has complicating factors for people with like blood disorders, like diabetes or, or um, you know, things that people with, you know, weight problems have a lot of problems with. So it was riddled with controversy. Uh, no dangerous drugs, no hardship diets. Here is thrilling news for fat folks. You can lose up to 25 pounds in 25 days by simply nibbling on tasty, appetite-satisfying candy whenever you are tempted to overeat. This diet plan says that um, anytime you feel like overeating, just eat candy and you are guaranteed to lose weight because the candy is going to curb your appetite. So um, it's just unbelievable. I love this. It says cut out and mail the no risk coupon for a dollar and you get for a dollar the liberal supply of Kelpidine candy. So why this, ad, this coupon is not cut out is beyond me. How can you read this ad? in 1955 and not cut this out and send it in. I'm surprised we don't have all green labels for this book because how can you resist the Kelpidine diet plan? Anyways, I just love it. I absolutely love it. This is gonna be hard to sell. I might have to display this backwards. Um, ads are one of the things that got me into comic collecting in the first place when I saw ads like that in old books. Um, that's really what, what piques my interest is the historical significance of comics and what this book shows and that ad in particular shows about the times, the times back then and the times where we're at now and how drastically different things are in just one person person's lifetime is incredible. Um, and comics show that progression. And that's one of the reasons why I think they're historically significant. One of the reasons why I'm so excited and passionate about the hobby. All right. So as I was editing, um, another package showed up with another trade that I did. So I thought I would throw this in there. And some of you guys are going to give me crap for this one because I traded this for the Something is Killing the Children, number eight, one in 25, DeKal variant. I know, I know it was the second rarest Something is Killing the Children book, but really I was uh, looking to move that book. Nobody was biting. I was, and I was uh, looking to get around 1800 for the book. And I think I can get that um, for this stack of books here. And I also threw in King and Black Gwenum, number one. Um, so those two books for all of this. And uh, we have... Silk, number one, first solo series for Silk. Um, these two books he just threw in as bonuses. Amazing Spider-Man 800, the Adam Hughes exclusive cover. 
and Friendly Neighborhood Spider-Man number 11, uh, which I believe is just a cover that he liked. I don't think there's anything significant about that book. Giant Size X-Men number one facsimile in a CGC 9.8 with a custom label. X-Men number one facsimile also with a custom label. And the big book is Nyx number three in a CBCS 9.8 signed by Joe Quesada. And uh, this is the first appearance of X-23 and Laura Kinney. And this was a monster book uh, just recently. I mean, it's still a monster book. Incredibly significant. Definitely tons of spec potential here. Um, back in May of this year, uh, Blue Label CGC sold for 2200 And the most recent sale in August of this year is 1700 for a Blue Label CGC. So I'm going to have this uh, Joe, Joe Casada signed edition for sale for 1500 on my website, which I think is a steal of a deal. Anyways, guys, hit me up. If you think you might have a trade, go check out what's on the website. Um, I like to try to keep it for pre-orders, but I also have a ton of stuff coming in. There might be a ton of stuff on the website by the time you see this. Um, don't forget to subscribe to the newsletter and you're entered to win that Spider-Gwen Zero and a CGC 9.8. Subscribe to the channel, comment on this video, and like this video, and you're entered to win the 8K subscriber giveaway. As always, thank you so much for sticking with me to the end, and we'll catch you in the next one. Bye. Brise Comics.